got my little temp gun here. So you can see she's out. She is up basking. Right? So she's at an angle. The sun is coming. The rays are kind of coming down at an angle like that. So we're coming down like this. So she's basking. And I'm going to show you when you have them in an enclosure, you want to give them different temperatures so that they can regulate their own body temperature. You definitely want to give them a basking site and then some other sites they can cool off in. All right, so if we have the water, and you can see the water is about 70 degrees, 69, 70. The soil itself, oops, let me point it on there. The soil itself is about 74. And she's been out here basking, and so she is up almost 78, so a little warmer than the ground. I don't know how long she's been out here basking. She might have just gotten up here. So if she stays out here longer, she's going to warm up even more. And you can see she's active. She's poking that head out. She's doing typical basking behavior. And over here we have this guy. You can see his head's out. He's doing that typical basking behavior. And he is at about the same. 70... Seven degrees, looks like 76, 77. And the substrate, so his substrate's in the sun a little more and it's warmer. So he's just kind of ambient temperature, he might not have been out that long. And then where the ground is wet, it's 70. So this over here is where the ground is wet. It's dry over here, it's picking up more of that sun. And then he's basking. And he's getting warmer. So like I said, they can self-regulate. I don't know how long they've been out, but they're gonna self-regulate. So it's good to have those different temperatures. And once again, behavior during the day, they're gonna come out and bask, and they won't be out here all the time. They also swim. There's one down there hiding. All right, but you remember at night, they're gonna come out and be active more because they're nocturnal. They're gonna be out searching and, and, and moving around looking for things. But just wanna show you real quick how they're gonna self-regulate given the basking site. They're gonna be able to warm up as much as they want and then go down into the water to cool off or even on that piece of wood and be at a different angle so they're not in the direct sun, they can cool off that way as well. All right. All right, everybody. Um, Continuing on, I made a video about like with the turtles in the greenhouse, the aquatic turtles, the ambos, kind of how they use their basking spots and showed you the different temperatures in their enclosures so they can self-regulate. Um, for those are aquatics, and but I also want to show you like if you're indoors, like we didn't have a light out there because they just naturally use the sunlight coming through the greenhouse. But in an indoor pen, whether it's aquatic or terrestrial, it's gonna be the same kind of setup. So we don't have any indoor aquatics, we just don't have any with these lights on them. But I'm gonna show you with these star tortoises, kind of how we have it set up. And you can see these are just incandescent lights. Um, you can buy these at pet stores or you can still find them a lot at hardware stores. And they're heat lamps, so maybe they're 75 watt, 100 watt, 150 watt, depending on how hot you want it and how big your enclosure is, right? The farther away the light's gonna be from this from the ground, the bigger the wattage. And we also have these open face ones, so that heat's able to radiate over a wider area, but it's not as targeted, so it's not gonna get as hot, but it's gonna spread out over a wider area. And we're gonna have the best of both worlds. Then we have this one here that's got this um, dome on it, which kind of reflects all the heat into one specific area, so you get one area that's a little warmer, but it doesn't spread out as much. So we kind of have both, so we get a nice warm area for the turtles to spend time in. So I'm gonna show you over here. You can see here, that's about 80 degrees here. And these are um, Indian star tortoises They needed to be warm. So about 79 degrees on this side. And we're up to 84 over here. You can see that. So 79, 84, and then over here, we're up to 98, all right? And so that's pretty good. That's, that's about as warm as you want it, okay? So 
even for a, a basking aquatic turtle, maybe upper 90s, 100, that's kind of pushing it. I mean, they can self-regulate, right? As long as you give them the space to get out of that really hot area, they can cool off when they need to. But upper 90s is pretty good. That's going to be plenty of warmth for a turtle to be able to warm up and get to the basking temperature they need before they jump back in the water and cool off. But the big thing is you don't want it to get too hot, right? You're pushing 100, over 100, you can have animals get burned. I mean, the odds on, as long as they have other spaces to travel to, like the star tortoise, even if it was hotter, they could sit there for a little bit and heat up and move. Or, right, if you have a good spot around it's a little cooler, right? That one spot's gonna be really hot and the rest of it's gonna be cooler and it's gonna taper off and get cooler and cooler and cooler as you move to the opposite side. So this star tortoise, it's able to regulate itself from a cooler temperature, upper 70s, 80s, low mid 90s, upper 90s. And that will let it regulate itself. And that's the most important thing. You can have a cooler end. I mean, this could even be in the lower 70s on this end. And if he doesn't want to be cold, he's not going to be over there. He's going to stay in the 80s and 90s. Okay, so it's the same thing with aquatics. Sorry, I don't have aquatics to show you, but you just need to have a spot that comes out of the water. It can be a bucket with land in it, a tub with land in it, or it can be a couple of sticks hanging out that are underneath the light. But give them options. Let them have a spot that's hot, like mid to upper 90s, and then a spot that's cooler, maybe mid to lower 90s, and then it just tapers off. So they have a nice range of temperatures in their enclosure. And then they're going to know what they want, they're going to know what they need, and they're going to move in between it. So you can see these are moving here. These are in the cooler area, it's upper 70s there. And then that guy's over there in a spot that's in the 90s. And you come in here 10 minutes from now, he might still be there. All right, let's see what the temperature is on his shell. So he's about 84, 86. So he's pretty warm over there. Maybe he'll stay there. Maybe he wants to be warm. Maybe he'll come over here and cool off. And then you get this one. So it's 83. Of course, both of these were just underneath the light. So there might not be much difference in the body temperature. And this is surface temperature. It's going to cool off more than the body. So that's 81. Remember the core body, once it heats up, it's going to cool off much slower. And this guy has been over here the whole time. But he's in the 82, so he's about ambient with the temperature in this part of his cage. All right, and if he wants to get warmer, he'll move over there. If he wants to cool off, he can come over here. And that's the key. Make sure they have their own spot that they can cool off or heat up and be where they want to be. And also, they have some hide spots for terrestrial, for aquatics. I mean, they're not going to really hide on the ground. They're going to be hiding out uh, in the water. All right, so that's pretty much it. Just want to make sure you see the lights, incandescent light bulbs. You can get in like a hardware store, you know, 100 watt, 150 watt, 75 watt, whatever you need, depending on how the, the, the distance between the light and the substrate is going to impact the wattage that you need. And you don't really want to get above 100 degrees. Um, that's plenty of heat for them to be able to regulate their body temperature. All right, I hope you enjoyed it, and let me know if you have any questions.